presentation to investors, WeWork said that its net losses more than doubled in Q3, uh, 1.25. another startup losing enormous amounts of money 1.9 billion last year but it is extremely complicated take a look at its corporate we work and you know, we don't want that deal i wish they would just go away Throughout history, bad leadership and execution of governance led to the downfall of empires and kingdoms. Nations had fallen apart because of a tyrant, a lunatic, or simply a stupid leader. Same thing can happen to corporates. Adam Newman is an infamous charismatic CEO who founded WeWork for years making it the largest startup company in the United States. A company large enough to be valued more than Snapchat, Twitter and Spotify. A CEO wicked enough to convince even the biggest investors in the world to invest in his company up to $16 billion without making half of that in profit, securing funds larger than country's entire GDP. How did we work with its founder Adam Human looming over everything? Went from the number one startup in the US to nothing. What happened? Commercial real estate is the property that is used exclusively for business-related purposes, or the business of providing startups with office space adapted for industrial use and retail. The CRE has been growing exponentially for the last two decades, mainly in Colorado, Manhattan, and Washington. It's 2010. Adam Newman, a 31-year-old Israeli Navy officer, established a CRE company with Miguel McAlvey, his co-founder, called WeWork. The company focuses on millennials and technology startups by providing them with eco-friendly and co-working spaces complete with sustainable furniture and groundbreaking technological support. Starting out in an empty floor in Brooklyn, struggling to find spaces and pay his small team, Adam took the privilege of the gig economy. This opened the gate for the company to build a strong workforce of about 6,000 employees. Thanks to Adam Newman and his visions, we work went from a struggling company to gathering a whopping $16 billion in funding, and later on, valued at almost $50 billion. As we work, we soon fall. Adam Newman, 6'5", is a 31 years old businessman and investor born in Tel Aviv, Israel. Served in the Israeli Navy for five years before being discharged as captain. Later on, he moved to America in 2001 attended the Zeklin School of Business in New York, married to the American actress Rebecca Paltrow Newman, and they have two daughters, Lulu and Elle. Adam always believed that he will be the first trillionaire in history, so he started to put his foot on the ground by founding two failed companies. Struggling to pay his first small team of eight employees, he dropped out of school to fully focus on his upcoming projects. Three years later, he founded WeWork with the $1 million that he and his wife Rebecca had received from her Long Island parents. As a CEO, Adam had a peculiar character with his employees. He would usually talk about his visions for the company, the future investments, expansions and acquisitions. But for experts, all his talk was nothing but push. The numbers on papers were totally different from what he's been preaching. It was hard for early investors to trust such a starting company under the full control of a CEO with drug, alcohol, and sex addictions. In his book, Billion Dollar Loser, Reeves Weidman interviewed about 200 people to gather more information about the behavior of Adam. Before his work even existed, Adam been introduced to Chennai, an Israeli entrepreneur already running a co-working space in New York. Chennai had explained to Adam how the business works and taught him tips and tricks. 
and yet Adam deceived him by founding his own co-working business. We work just across the street. Well, Chennai felt like he's been deceived and his hustle stolen. Eventually, Chennai found Adam with the sole purpose of telling him that he's a f But the headline is an accusation of pregnancy discrimination filed by Miss Medina Bardi. She accused Newman to discriminate her during her pregnancy period by murdering her and many other executives. He would repeatedly mention the increase of her belly size and followed a pattern of discrimination. His behavior and attitude were among the reasons we work took a hit before going IPO. But despite the decorum of Adam, he managed to gain the trust of many sought-after investors from around the world, regardless of the absence of a distinct business plan. Some of these investors are J.P. Morgan, Mort Zuckerman, Credit Suisse, but the superstar of them all is SoftBank, led by Masayoshi San, who poured 17 billion into the company, allowing the journey to begin. Adam was good with speeches, he had a plan for everything, every question, every statement, and every criticism. He rarely gets shocked by the press. This gave him a huge ability of simplifying the business model to investors. The business model in a nutshell is rent office spaces at a cheap rate via long-term lease contracts, and then re-rent those spaces to startups and small businesses for a high rate under flexible rating model. The business model was full of risk, and I will explain why in the next chapter. And yet, investors believed in him blindly, regardless of the red numbers on the graphs. 2012 is considered to be the ground floor for the company. In the spring of that year, the company received the first funding of $6 million, thus opening a new space in Los Angeles on January. A first space in San Francisco is announced. In total, we work as four offices in New York and one in LA. Those spaces will hold approximately 100 entrepreneurs, designers, and developers. In that year alone, the company managed to secure more than $23 million in funding and investments. In just two years' span, the company's investors skyrocketed, securing about $1 billion, making WeWork officially a unicorn, which is a term given to startup companies valued at more than $1 billion. Now that the company has a pool of money, what's a better thing to do than expand? And that's exactly what they did. The company opened two more co-working spaces in Washington and announced one more in Seattle. By 2015, they became literally an untouchable behemoth in CRE, owning 54 co-working spaces in New York, Boston, Philadelphia, Washington, Miami, Chicago, and the list goes on. International locations include London and Amsterdam, along with new locations in Tel Aviv and Herzliya in Israel, Germany, Brazil, Netherlands, France, and Russia. In nine years since its establishment, the company holds 528 locations in 111 cities and 29 countries. No other startup has made what WeWork achieved in a few years. This captured the interest of the big players, and by that I mean SoftBank, the multinational conglomerate company that would later seize the power of WeWork, led by its chairman Masayoshi Son. Masayoshi is a crucial player in the story of WeWork. So who is this man? Masayoshi San is considered to be a pioneer of investment and financial industry. Anything he touches turns into gold. He is worldly known as a man with big pockets and even a bigger patience. Once he believes in a company, nothing will baffle his way of making more billions of that same company. The most famous of his investments are Alibaba and Uber. San and Newman first met in 2016 at an event called Startup India. We work then had less than 55 locations and none in India. Masayoshi was really impressed by the fast growth of the company, something that Adam hoped for him to notice. The SoftBank's leader agreed to initially outlay $4 billion into the company. They're both subconsciously in belief that WeWork would boost the fortune of the both men. And that was the case until a third man enters this scenario. Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. Bin Salman was Sun's biggest investor, which two years earlier agreed to help Masayoshi fuel his $100 billion vision to fund some of the world's successful but controversial startups. Those include WeWork, DoorDash, and ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok. And for that to happen, the gods have to make an event to publicly announce that, an event known as Davos in the Desert. Newman is invited, but he had a slight problem, his Israeli citizenship. He was legally not allowed to enter Saudi's Islamic territory. Nonetheless, everything is going according to Newman's plan of fueling his ego and cash thirst. 
until the news broke out of Jamal Khashoggi. Sudden disappearance inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Instantly, the world's fingers pointed to Bin Salman, as gruesome details emerged from Bonzo to body parts removed. It was only a matter of time before investors took issue with SoftBank's relation to the Saudi money. The company's stock took an unprecedented hit of 20%, that's $20 billion. Sun indirectly defended the Saudi prince during the SoftBank's earning presentation events. We want to see those responsible for Kashuk's murder held accountable, but at the same time, we have also accepted a responsibility to the people of Saudi Arabia, an obligation we take quite seriously to help them manage their financial resources and diversify their economy. It was during this time that the pressure on SoftBank's mounted, and even more pressure built on the company's stock. This led Masayoshi to rethink his offer to Newman. Both men wasn't on the same page over who would run the company when the funding deal is over. On Christmas Eve, Masayoshi called Newman to let him know that deal is off. This put Adam in a state of rage. Still thirsty for more and more money, he desperately managed to secure a $2 billion revised deal and made his final move. On December 28, 2018, he issued confidential documents registering reward for an initial public offering or known as IPO, which would take less than a year for Adam to know that this move was his biggest mistake. Upon the announcement of going public, WeWork's IPO went viral as a ridiculous and dangerous IPO, and that's due to many factors. The most obvious is the business model itself. The business model of WeWork operates with a much higher risk degree compared to its competitor, IWG, the Belgian CRE company. The Belgian company has 10% less market cap than WeWork and actually make profits, and that's because it has more square feet of office. Another reason is WeWork takes a much more operating engagement with much long terms and more geographic concentration. According to Forbes, two main factors account for WeWork's massive amount of operating lease obligation compared to IWG. Moreover, WeWork business model is highly eligible to be struck by a recession. Simply put, landlords wanted long renting terms which gives them stability and guaranteed cash flows at lower rates which WeWork is willing to give. But the clients of WeWork wanted shorter leasing terms at a higher rate to give them more room for growth and financial flexibility and the resilience of moving their offices elsewhere to adapt with their business needs. Those two factors conflicted with the desires of both landlords and clients. So in return, WeWork provided its clients with renovations, technological support and enhanced amenities, which led to more revenue growth with the lack of delivering profits to the company and investors. WeWork is actually in the perfect time to generate profits, and that's because the US is in its longest economic expansion in history. So experts asked, if the company couldn't provide profits in that period, when will it? But the most crucial factor is the CEO Adam Newman himself. To ensure durability of his control over WeWork, Adam divided the shares of the company into a multi-class voting structure also called the super vote structure. It is simply a structure which gives a class of shares more voting power. According to Bloomberg reporting, Newman's votes are worth 20 to 1, meaning his single vote worth 20 votes of a regular person. This type of governance is seen as a liability by investors. The multi-class voting structure gave Adam absolute control over the company, preventing investors from having a say of the foreseeable future. Moreover, he is his own company's landlord and has collected rent from it for years while taking loans from the company itself at interest rates of less than 1%. All the loans were repaid, but the low interest rate meant Adam was gaining direct profits from the company. But the most ridiculous of them all is that he trademarked the word we and have we work pay him about $6 million for the word's licensing fees. In simple words, his own company pays him for the name he gave to it. All these factors combined the dual class shares, the personal loans, the rapid expansion and usual behavior of Adam suggested that the IPO was a plan of gaining more personal profits. So by September 2019, SoftBank, the mega investors in WeWork, has pushed the company to postpone its IPO, which put the company under a huge pressure. A week later, WeWork announced that they're delaying their IPO to at least next October. Under SoftBank's pressure, WeWork reported that they're laying off about 2,000 of their workforce in order to save cash. In the same day, Adam steps down as the chief executive officer of WeWork.
SoftBank now holds about 65% of the equity in Wii Company. In 2021, Adam Newman failed a renegotiation and received $245 million in company stock and $200 million in cash. So basically got rewarded $1.7 billion for destroying a $50 billion company. The company's revenues are still bleeding from the air of Newman. The company's revenue growth decreased by 24% in 2021, compared to 1.23% in the same period of 2020. The story for work isn't just a story of numbers and graphs, it's much more than that. It's a story that demonstrates how businesses should not run. Growth is crucial, fast expansions can be devastating without having a solid ground. In essence, remember that your behavior is the lifeline of your business. Thank you, and see you in the next video.